I met this guy um, not far off 30 years ago and uh, I was actually co-driving at Flukebra and for those who can remember it Wigan used to have it was actually one of his club events I put, point that out at this point yeah. they used to have a system whereby they hung all the cards all your time cards on strings and there were ten on a row and obviously first was top left and last was bottom right and after a couple of stages we went up to have a look see how we were doing and I started at about the fourth row down started going back along the row and bear in mind we were only in a 1200 Nova Cup car and I'm going along and I got to the end of the 20s the second row and I thought bloody hell we can't be lower than 40 can we as I heard over my shoulder somebody coming bloody hell you're doing all right and I, and I turned around and carried on looking and he says ah, he says yeah he said leading it huh? he said but have you seen that car there he said they're not far off us and they're only in an old Nova Cup car and I looked around and this guy stood over my shoulder and he was first overall and we were second overall is that right you can't remember that that was right there. yeah is that when Rob Barry was there he was testing his Sierra Cosmos for her AC Yes, he was. That's right. Uh, I'd have won that day if it had to, if it stopped a bit damp. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, but and I think we've been in touch more or less ever since. But not, not, not all the time. But no, 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 no. and uh, I've got to say, he did beat us and win the class. We finished second in class in the, in the thirteen hundred class. I might add. <laughs> um, but I think I think you were were you third and we were fourth. I think uh, Rob Barry. I think I was second or third yeah. anyway. It was up there. It, it was, was, it was something it? like that anyway. Yeah, so and, and we both, I was, I was navigating for Ian Knight at the time, and we both came away and said, well, you know, we couldn't have been beaten by an ice of walking. Very <laughs> nice to say. No, so no. I'd like to give Tony Lynch a big welcome, please. <laughs> so Thank we'll start off, start off going back a bit before then. So where, when did you, uh, when, when and where did you start competing? I started competing, it was, uh, how it got going really was I had a, a Ford Cortina at the time, Black Louie was on back, thought it was like Stairski, which had his welbles in, and, you know when, <clears throat> you know in, in, in the day, like an obviously that was day, but girls would always go out with their best mate, and the, I obviously fancied this girl, and the following day, this, this other girl she was with like, was going doing this rally and a, a, a fella was navigating on or driving on I think it was called Cagger Stages then up, up in Barry and Furnace so I had never even heard of rally in a rally car I'll be honest with you and I just but I fancied this bird like you know, which is now <laughs> my, which is now my, my good lady like and uh, what happened was I thought yeah well I'll go along and I just remember this Cortina breaking down the way up there somebody else gave us a lift I eventually got to this rally which is in Barry and Furnace full of SH1T everywhere we were wallowing it and I just fell in love with it I just absolutely and ever since that day I, uh, Wigan Alice Spurs was going then I don't know if I remember ever, ever, a guy called Jim Foden running them um, got in touch kind of like with him just went down and I remember this one of these cars that was competing there was Wigan Alice Spurs and me being a waggy a Wigan lad went down to his garage started hanging about like you do on you know Saturday and just messing about and Eventually got asked to navigate for somebody and I was navigated for years and I used to watch these lads for years and you know I, I mean I've not done so bad with driving and I think that I think I learned a lot of it by sitting at side of lads and and obviously learning a lot of like I used to think be sit at side of them and think like what the hell they're good these men you know and then eventually like I said one day I started driving myself so I did a few auto tests and stuff like that just to you know try and prove to myself that yeah I could you know I, I could do something. But I navigated for years, and um, I think eventually I was I was asked if I wanted to navigate for who I called Jed Jed Gardner. He rang me up. He wants to learn and self drive, and you know I've obviously I'd done a few years then, and we'd done a bit of championship winning with as a navigator that NWCC and stuff like that. And he rang me up. I said I'd love to do it. And I, I mean, like I say I've not rallied now since 2005, and I think things have changed since I were rallying. But Wigan Motor Club used to definitely be where. <coughs> A driver and navigator, they'd, they'd pay half the day a piece, you know what I mean? Like, okay, you own your car and everything, but you know, you shared the entry and all that kind of cost. And I remember saying to him, I'd love to do it, but I can't afford it. This is 
uh, and I'll tell you what it was, it was the uh, Grasdale, was it called the Silver Stage? Is that the one that did Grasdale and... Silver Stage around Silver Stage. It was Grasdale, but it was Grasdale Forest anyway. And uh, he asked me what I'd do, I said I'd love to do it, I said, but I can't afford it. He said, well, no, don't worry, if you can sit in for me, I'll, I'd appreciate it and I'll, you know, well, don't worry about the money. So I did that and then he asked me what I'd do another and same thing then because I had commitments with other lads here, but this lad had rang me up out of blue, so I knew what I was doing and I knew where my money was going to go that year. And he just said, if, you, if, you'll, you know, if you'll navigate for me, you don't need to worry about that, like. And so I thought, oh, great. And then, you know, a job from then seemed to carry on. So I, I ended up committing to him, really. And then we did a single venue at Alton Park. And it was where you went, go the, the wrong way around at Alton Park. You used to, you know, you kicked off from the pit lane and you went in a bit of a dip over there and you'd go out to left because it was the wrong way. So. I wasn't being paid by this guy, but I felt quite honoured by being, you know, it was almost like a freebie for me. So, with that, then obviously I felt as I, you know, I'm most professional in doing it. So, when the lads are counting you down going like five, four, you've got a picture this now, so it's like five, four, and then he, he starts to go, doesn't he? So then I said, whoa, whoa, stop. But in, whoa, whoa, stops, three, two, one, innit? So it's, whoa, 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 stop, right, get going. <laughs> so then, so then, as you're going over at Brow and goes 90 left, I'm not going over at Brow and saying 90 left. I'm saying, you do that again, you know, because I felt, well, I'm, I'm there doing a job. Well, they forgot to turn the steering wheel, went straight to Anne Co. He's, he's, he's walking around like that, oh, stiff neck on job, and he turns around and says, do you know what caused that? I said, oh, snow, ice, oil. He says, no, he says, you giving me a bollocking like. So ever since then I thought, I went home and I had an escort, that I had a mark to escort that I couldn't sell off him, but you know, he's only 200 quid for it. And at the time all you had to have was like, I think a lamy screen, a yellow piece of tape when it's on you, thing. And I said to him, I'm going to have a go at that driving because I, I won't be any good kind of thing, but I fancy it, you know what I mean? And I couldn't sell car anyway. And that's how I started driving in my first rally was, uh, I can't remember the name of the stage, but it was in Burton Wood Airfield at the time. And uh, and that was me, me, and that's basically what I started driving. So if we hadn't crashed that day, I'd probably still be navigating. <laughs> <laughs> what year are you talking about then? Well done, Steve, because I want to remember that one. Yeah, it's, um, <laughs> I think it might have been a tad earlier than that because I think like late, I think late eight because I ended up doing quite a few rallies and then I was twice SD34 champion rally champion so that was, I think that was like late eighties so I don't think I'd have done so well so quickly. I think it would take me a few years to to get into that line. But yeah, but that's how I started. Like I said, it's, so if it weren't for Jed Gardner crashing that day, I'd have, uh, I might have felt still been navigating. So. <clears throat> So you decided to take up driving, and uh, you had this escort. Did yeah. you stop with the escort all the time? You were rallying. I, I had a few escorts. So you know you get sucked in, don't you? And you want a better one, and it got better and better. And I had stopped with thirteen hundred for a while because I just felt it was affordable. Um, and then I ended up with it. A real, what, what I thought was the Mark Twos eventually biggest mistake I ever made was, you know, that thought eventually they're going to, to get in all now, these guys. So it seemed a good idea to have a Mark V shell, let's go Cosy shell, but with all the Mark II running gear in it. And that's what we built, we built one of them, and we had a go, and so we had a, a, a 16 valve engine, Vauxhall engine in it, and we did all right, like we did a, a little bit of winning in it and that, and then um, we, the MSA, came up with one of these rules where, at the time, they did say that you you were not going to be able to have a Vauxhall engine in a Ford car. So I thought, I'm going to get be stuck with this thing, like, so I best get shut now. So uh, I came, just before I got sold, it, it was 2000, November 2000, I took kill in November 2000. So we got stuck in garage for quite a while. Um, and I did have one break in that where a guy called Lyndon Burton had done the Nova Challenge rallycross and he was a mate of mine and he said do you want to have a go like I built this new Nova do you want to have a go well, Steve did you ever get into Rallycross did I know you then in Rallycross yeah, yeah. Oh. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah so he um, he said, Do you want to have a go in this, this note over? I said, Oh, yeah, yeah, I'd, lo- I'd love to, I'd love to have a go. Anyway, how did I go? So I, I did okay in it, and but I beat Lyndon Burton, lad, he lent it me. So yeah. then I said, Oh, that was brilliant. He said, Can I have another go? <laughs> you know, you can't, you bloody you can buy it. <laughs> you, can, you can buy it, like so. But I loved it that much, I did buy it. So I did a couple of years at Nova Challenge, um, and that, that just. The Nova, the course was, came out. Was that the same time as McGuigan was doing it? I did at Daily Star. That's right. Uh. And, uh, oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Do you remember that one? Watching on TV, yeah. going over. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> Said that sometimes. Yeah. Well, that that event, I was servicing for Brian Wiggins. Oh yeah, yeah. And Brian came running, in, came flying back into pits, jumped out at car and went and hit him. Van. <laughs> So what's wrong, Ray? No, he, he finished him off. He says, I've just tipped Baron. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> He's going to come and hit me. <laughs> they were great times, then. like I said, the Nova Challenge days. They were, they were, they were good times. It was, uh, it was well promoted by, by Vauxhall. It was, it was great for sponsors and that. And I think it would have carried a long time, but the, the Corsa came out. And the idea was to shell it all, wouldn't it? Supply a kit that would get shelled into it, but it didn't fit. And it's not like died to death. And... Uh, that's when it phased off and I just ended up getting back into rallying but I had great times with that. I'll never forget when I was at Brands Arch and uh, there was Texaco, Susie Brails for the Texaco case. I think it was, I'll tell you who was our mentor then, was um, Dave Metcalf, wasn't it? Yes. Late Dave Metcalf was our mentor, like, you know, working on behalf of Vauxhall. Yeah. So my first ever event was, was Brands. Obviously nobody knew me, there was like 30 cases. So I was, I rally cross works, you do like three qualifying heats and then you'll qualify for the final. So it says 30 cars there, so there'll be 10, you know, 10 lads doing, you know, one heat, then another heat, another heat, but it's all, the all times go together. So, nobody knew Tony Lynch did this once to buy Pemberton Tigers and, and I was doing all right, because I was winning my little, my, my little group. And then they come out for the final, they had Texaco cars, Susie Brailsford, Fuji Films, Rob Coates, and Pemberton Tires to one of and I can never forget it. I look, and I looked at me as I'm looking at all these others behind me, I'm looking at them, I'm thinking, I'll just have sure you men what to do as well, like, you know, because of, and that's what I honestly felt, I thought it was that easy, like, and flipping it, I was bottom rung of the next, of the next ladder, because that, the group I'd been with, you know, the, all the big lads were like qualifying together, and so obviously they were all tussling. I'd obviously had good time simply because I'd been almost like a single venue for me, I'd got off to the front and off I'd gone. And there was a gap, and it was smaller than here to that wall between me and Arm Core. And I went into that car and I last followed Susie Bales with it. And I did think she braked a little bit late, I'm being honest, but I thought, well, this is what you might do, and today I'll settle for second. And I, I, I'll tell you, and I, I honestly thought that. I thought, I'll live and learn, that's what you got to do. Friggin' hell. Bang, bang, cars came there, cars came there. I went into the first car and a second, and I came out at the first corner last. And I thought, I'll never ever let you do that to me again. And then that, that's fact that and like I said, I lived and learnt an awful lot there. But that but talk about being sucked in and, and enjoying it, it'd be brilliant. And I think if the course uh, situation hadn't come about, I'd have probably been rally crossing like a lot longer, if you will. But then the the Nova Challenge was, was like the entry level, wasn't it? It was it was accessible for for, for Fort Larkos to to be able to afford to do it, yeah. you know, you had your, you know, your super modified, they call it then, your supercars, it was kind of like out of my league, and that's when we went back rallying. Um, and then, like I said, drifted back into to rallying, and like I said, I had many years, I loved it, I still love it now. I'd love to, I think if I did a rally today, I think I'd probably crash off first corner, because I have 30 yards to play with, don't I? You know what I mean? It's, um, maybe I should try one in somebody else's car again, eh? If anybody fancies lending me one, you are Lindens again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So that's yeah, so that's, that's my first thing in was in uh, rally crossing, and then I went back rally crossing again in two thousand. And so, so what caused the the swap back to rally crossing again? Um, as I say, I had this this I call it a cosy, but it was it was this my far thing, you know. With it, I had this that I was just about to sell with the real changes, and that I had like two hundred not a horse and a that looks axle and a decent box and everything, but. As I say, in November 2000, I became ill. Uh, you notice know, the name Team Geriatric. That, that, that'll tell you how that came about in a minute. But obviously, I came, I came ill in November 2000. And then I was, I was out again for a few years. And in that time, 
everybody then, uh, you know, obviously, you know, you want to do well in it, don't you, if you're having a goal, you know, and I got to that stage where I wanted to do well, not just making numbers up, let's say. So everybody who had a decent merit too had like 300 horse and sequential boxes and this, this thing I had was probably a bit of a knacker really, you know, compared to trying to compete with that. So I did have a couple of goals, I did three sisters, like I said, I'd been ill, but it was a little bit too much for me. I'd, I'd had Crohn's disease, I'd, I'd lost my burial in my large intestine and stuff like that, you know, I was carrying a couple of bags at the front, I was still sewn up and everything. And, and it was a bit heavy for me, like it was a bit too much for me. So, uh, so a lot of you might know that called Dave Baines from Autoquip and he was doing the production cars and he said to me a couple of years earlier, you want to be having a go at this rally cross like, you know, and when you get better and all that. And it was a Peugeot 205, production class 205. And uh, I just rang up and said, listen, is that little 205 like, is it still for sale? Because what had happened is my, I had two mechanics who always looked after me. We've, we've lost one now, Walt, we lost him again. So he'd been ill. So he, he was like riddled with cancer, poor lad, and he was ill. I had told him, he was like, well, I call him an engineer these days. He was in hospital, lying in bed with his nose about this big because he couldn't stop it bleeding. I was like, I packed out. I have, like, Team Jerry acted. I was knackered. <laughs> and we came back, and uh, we thought, what we'll do is we'll have, we'll just get this little car, because rally crossing, from what I could remember, was three small little sprints. So unlike doing a 20 mile stage or whatever it'd be. So it was a way of getting fit. And, uh, that's basically how I got back into rally crossing. I bought that car, and the name team how it started. It was there was Walter. Now you've got a picture of this. The stick up my drive. Walter's there with all kinds of tubes hanging out of him. There's me with all kinds of tubes hanging out the side of me. Tony's got a face this big full of packings. But we're pushing this car drive. I says, "What are you doing?" I said, "Well, we're thinking of having another go like a rally cross." Did you get that? Like, you look like a bunch of team. Like you look like a bunch of geriatrics. That was it. <laughs> and just as a joke, we put a little sticker on car handwritten. You know, we went and did, it was only a one-off that year, we just did an event, I think I finished fourth. And again, I'd never fell out with rallycross, it was just circumstantial, so I loved it, I loved the sport, it was still good. But it was just dead cheap compared to this big escort cosy type thing that I had, and the production 205, and I thought that'd be ideal for me. That was 2004, and uh, that's how we got back into to rallycross it. <clears throat> so at that time you'd have been in the same class as Simon? Oh, oh yeah, me and Simon on and, and Rick with his Oh Rick right, Orton. right, Ricky boy, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The man who never the man who <laughs> <laughs> my brakes failed. I didn't see you. <laughs> flipping heck, I didn't see you going that you know, flipping heck, you broke too early. That, that lad. <laughs> That's him, yeah, I know that boy, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I've got some good visit back in my two or five, yeah, that lad, yeah. And Simon his brother, I could tell a funny tale about that as well. Really. Simon's a sound lad, he's still in it, like he's obviously Running the Subaru now, uh, like, and the funny tale with him was at Blyton. Um, I don't know if any of you knew Blyton or that he rallies there, but the old rallycross track was on two every year. Then. Yeah, well, <laughs> one was very, very fast. That the old rallycross track, but it went through where we started. Then he used to go up and he used to go like, like through a chicane yeah. with it with the arm core there, or a big barrier was yeah. at the time. Right, I, you know, I was doing okay, and I'd used to go through with a another young lad and you know racing all the time and we knew two wouldn't fit we'd learnt the hard way you know we would never give up me and this lad and and uh, so one day there was started off up front row there was Simon on myself and a guy called Phil Chicken I, I don't know what car he had at the time they had still had a Lupo I can't remember he had something else but there's let's say he had a Lupo because I can't remember what he had so he had this Lupo it was me at middle the side of the Simon I remember running his metro at the time and uh so we set off, and and I'm thinking, well, they'll, they'll, they'll buckle it in a minute, like, because two can't get through the gap, that gap, and no way three is going to get through it, you know what I mean? And then we're third, we kept going, well, we must have been 20 yards off this thing, we're still three abreast, and I'm thinking, <laughs> fair play to them, like, cause, so, now what you've got to picture is like, in rally crossing, it's like, rubbing, it's allowed in it, rubbing mirrors, so honestly, I was being squeezed and squeezed and squeezed, and fair play, I'm, I will not giving up either. Anyway, I decided, 19 yards close enough so <laughs> I put my brakes on and I clapped on like and these two went bang <laughs> went, went out of the side what, what, you went that way I went that way I go straight to the middle wind race and I tell you what if you've ever seen Simon Orton Simon Orton's giving it this to he's the only guy you got me I've never ever been done in rally cross I've been in that naughty boys room many many times <laughs> but it's the only one time that I got done and I thought hang on I got done for putting brakes on here 
You know what I mean? <laughs> but that's exactly what happened. If Sam was here, he, he would, he would, he'd have a laugh about that now because that was pretty funny, that, you know, from our point of view, you know what I mean? Because but fair play, it's pretty bollocks, like, because that's... There's no way you're going to get three through there, and they weren't giving up like that. To, to drive a metro, didn't they? Well, I actually feel, yeah. But, uh, like, as he's doing, you know, he's, like, is he, it's not something I do with the supercars, because I always, what I've, what I've always done, no matter what I've driven, is I'm not saying I've wanted to go out to win them. I've wanted to go out to something I could afford to do with the chance of winning them. Does that make sense? You know, I'm not saying I want to go and, you know, spit it dummy out if I don't win, but I wanted to draft something that had the possibility of winning so if you beat me because you're better than me then great but if you beat me because of your pocket I can't be doing with that you know what I mean like so and that super care job is just it's too far for me like so I'd, I'd never get it I never thought I'd do what I'm doing now but again that's circumstantial so I suppose we really should ask what are you doing now uh, I'm actually what they called super modified in in the early days is now called super national so it's it's normally aspirated any size obviously within MSA regs obviously but any size engine you want, non turbo uh, can be turbocharged, which two wheel drive, front or rear, and pretty much anything you want. Uh, I'm currently leading the British Championship in Super National in a Ford K this year. Um, I've you know, since since the production days, I've driven Suzuki's and BMW Minis, and I'm in this Ford K. It's got a mount tune engine in it, Yulin gearbox, and I love it. It's great. I'm loving it. Like you know what I mean? It's. Uh, I've, I've mellowed as a driver. When I say mellowed, I'm still as, as keen. But I was telling Steve just earlier that when you would beg, steal and borrow when you're younger, you know, to... I mean, even the days when I knew you, you know, we'd beg, steal and borrow together. Oh, yeah. we're, all, we're all the same boat, you know. Um, where now is, you know, you go... You enjoy your day, you know, when... when I can't say it's professional, that's not the case. Not before, but, you know, you're committed to what you're doing. But I just feel that, like... If I'm perhaps behind somebody now, I'm going to say this now and then I'm going to tell you another tale in a minute, so I've contradicted myself here. But, <laughs> so what you would say is you can be behind somebody and you know, you're know you that close and hopefully wait for him to make a mistake where a few years ago I'd have been like knocked in all time to try and, you know, like Mr. Hart used to, used to love getting, trying to get past you, but he's like going through you, you know what I mean? <laughs> but, um, but, and I do feel I'm much more relaxed when I come in from now from a race now and, you know, if something's making noise, I fell off. I'll go in and, like I said, I've still got Tony, same engineer I've had for all these years. And I say, hey, Tony, there's, you know, noise down at the bottom, left-hand corner, it's under steering, all the whatever. I'm still no mechanic, I still can't make, you know, I, c- I couldn't come in and tell you, right, it's under steering because I just come in and tell you it's under steering, you know, and then they, you know, I say, hey, Tony, it's under steering, can you sort it? But what I used to do was, You've got three minutes to own it. How long will you be? Have you fixed it? You know, dragging around it. Alone. <laughs> and if I'd have just left him alone, because over the years it, it, it made me realise that them boys probably wanted it more, more than, you can't say more than me, but you know what I mean? He's like, just that's what that's what I've So I'll come in there, so I reach on it, this has fell off, I've hit him over there, that's hanging off, shall I put kettle on? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and that is where, and because if them boys can't fix it for me, nobody can, you know what I mean? Because they're, they looked after me like, and they'll carry on looking after me until the day I think I decide. I think you weren't taking up golf to come and carry me things, you know what I mean? It's, <laughs> it's just, I've, I've been very, very lucky in that respect, you know what I mean? It's, uh, they're not paid or like, they know, they're all, all the team is, you know, they've they've never wanted to be drivers, you know what I'm saying? They've always, but I'll tell you what, you don't put, you know, like, make a mistake, and they give you a bollocking. You know, they, you know I was lid nil this year. Um, you know about roller coaster where you do a joke lap? Is anybody watching on telly like they do a you do a joke lap and you are allowed communication in the car, which which I don't have really. Um, I, the MSA I don't if should say they should have MSA, but the MSA can change rules and regulations, can they? And sometimes, I, however you you perceive them, always seem to go against me. You know what I mean? So I've had communication in the past, and then been told that you can't have it. It's only in in the pit area which is what it says in the blue book, but then everybody like talking to one another. But, so I don't use it because I can't get done now. But I wish I had it at Lyddon Hill, because what had happened is I was behind this guy. Um, he, was, he was going up the hill as an airplane right at the top of Lyddon Hill. I've done my joke lap. I'm cruising. I'm loving driving this new car. It's, you know, it's flying. It's great. It just wants to overtake everything. I'm, I'm buzzing. And we're going up, up to Irpin. And 
this this guy's here, Fiesta, one of them. Uh, oh, I forget what the type of engine he's got. He's got his fancy engine in, and you know he's doing all that. But he seemed to slow. You know what I mean? I thought I, I could take this geezer like. So I come out flat out. You know, I've just been telling you like you sit behind him, nice and sensible. Anyway, I pulled out, went up to the thing, and I started breaking myself, and I went off on grass, came back on, followed him round, and then. So obviously somebody else overtook me at the time, and lo and behold, he went and took Joker lap, and I thought, you crazy dude, because if I'd have just sat behind him, I, I was so far in front, it was unbelievable, when I'd done the exertion on the grass, and that day, the communication, well, you should have heard them boys that day, when I threw that, <laughs> that, that was a bollocking. <laughs> uh, but like I said, they're passionate for it, they love it, don't they, you know what I mean, it's good. Have you, have you seen the new uh, Top Gear series? I have, yeah, that in a minute. Yeah, you think that'll be? If I can get my way, because I want, because I've, I was running a BMW Mini last year, and we still have that BMW Mini because we obviously we got the Ulan box and everything now that's in this car. When we went to get that, we went to buy the Ulan box and bought the car. So we still have the Mini because Lucas Oil, my main sponsor, want uh, that started back a few years ago. That's another tale I'll tell you that in a minute. So, I, but the BMW Mini. I ideally want to get Evans in in the BTA era and it doesn't clash with hers. But trying to get through to the BBC and them individually is is difficult. I have we've dealt with the BBC a couple of times, but um, if anybody can, can get me into the BBC and onto that, because I reckon that would truly help promote. If they could see somebody in you know in a mini, and I was uh, I won the BTA class in in the mini a couple of years ago, um, but in the British it's just doing on on power like you know the. the there's a difference between the British and the BTRDA, you can tell the difference in class, you hear me? Uh, clubman, that's what it is, isn't it? Like, but, um, so, do I think it'll help promote Rallycross? I think Rallycross is already promoted very well at the minute with the World Championship doing very well. I think the British Championship, and I know that the Odyssey deal is something like £100,000, it pays for the TV, and again, which is great, but if you've noticed and you do watch it, it's all supercars. And I, I'm going to sound a bit biased now because they don't show us men, but I sold a package, obviously to Lucas Oil this year, of the TV coverage that they promised us. And I think I've been on it about that much this year. And it was just to say, by the way, he's winning. Because if you're not in a supercar, so it's two ways, isn't it? Will it promote it as in spectators? Yes, I feel it will. Will it be more as in people rushing to get in it and feeling it's accessible? No, I won't because you only have to look on any internet you want and them supercars are three quarter million kept, you know, you're not going to get in it, are you? But you can get into my class. You can get in production class, it's still there. You can get in for that class for... You could probably get in it for a few grand. You could be competitive in it for seven or eight grand. You know, and I've always said to lads who ask me, and anybody, people ask me, is being... Can you compete in motor, in, in you know, in, in more sport, fairly cheaply? And I'm like, yes, you can. In fact, the BTRDA the other year, with the help of myself, did. Uh, you know, when Clarkson was on Top Gear, and they, they said it was cheaper than golf. Yeah. Remember all that? The downside of that was they showed it as banger racing, if you remember on the TV. You know, I got it here and got it. That was we didn't like that because unless your name's Orton, obviously. But like <laughs> that, um, that. It's not quite like Bangor here, you know, it's, it's not like that. Of course there's rubbing mirrors. I mean, I've, I've not wing mirrors off, honestly, I'm telling you. You only do 60, 70 mile an hour. And wing mirrors have gone off up your windscreen, over the top, and you keep it banging down, even. Friggin' hell, it's turned you on, you know what I mean? It's just dead excited, you know. It's, <laughs> it, it, like, I'm not fell out of rallying at all, and I've, I've no doubt I would go back rallying again eventually, but the excitement of being, you know, so close, and like, ten at first corner, it, it, it's, like, it's like really, really good, but... I just think it's misleading that as to that the you know will people want to go and enjoy that sport? And I, I think that'll put them off. Where Clarkson did, I think in his way, try to help the job, saying you can compete, where, you know, as cheap as golf. But I think they perceive that wrong because everybody be thinking, well, I can't get my care back like that. Of course, listen, accidents do happen. I just had a new front end on my care because somebody stopped and I didn't. You know what I mean? One of them, but it, it didn't. They don't always look at it the way... If me and you were making that same programme, you'd have made it where I think lots of us were wanting to go. Because we look at it as clubmen, you know what I mean, and trying to get into it. And 
you know, how, how we would get into it, but they've got to make a, an exciting TV show out of it. So, so, so truly, answer to the question is spectator wise, I think yes, it'll be great. But people rushing to get into it, not sure. What do you think? Well, they did a lot. I mean, that particular that that's a couple of years ago now. That isn't it? And they they done a. It was it was your car, and, was, and they were A or double eights, and you could buy it. They were fifty six pound a piece to be fair at the time, but that was only because you know through the championship like, and that's another reason I was doing production classes as long as I did. I thought it'd be brilliant because everything was controlled, you know, and it was like really really subsidised and it were, it were brilliant. So in, in you know it's like I said, I, I I'm, I'm sucked into it now. Uh, and I still enjoy it, so obviously I'm still doing it, but I hear, uh, I, mean, I go to Wigan Water Club uh, every other week, we meet on like ourselves every week, but I'll be sat in the corner and I'll be sat there and kind of listen to him talking and I think, frig, you know, they, you know, it's some of that spend some serious money, don't they, on these cars, you know, and, and I think, well, I... Well, I think I just was saying the other week that he, uh, did he have to sell some property to buy his... Uh, well, that's what I mean. Just forget that, like, innit? You know what I mean? It's uh, I'm still paying for my property. Never mind, sell some. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's uh, you know, I, I, listen. I know I've been very lucky. You know what I mean? Like, I, the, the the main reason I've got the sponsorship we've got now is in two thousand and two thousand and seven. I was a British production champion. And then 2008, I think it's second, 2009, right, so 2009, I was British champion again, production champion in a, in a Peugeot 205, not the same one I bought, I had three over the years, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, but then in 2010, they said, at the end of 2009, they said, right, what we're doing is, uh, what they were trying to do was get rid of the old cars, because rally crossing now has its own individual classes and what they used to do, they used to run what they call a super final. Now I don't know if anybody's heard the name of Julian Godfrey, I like built you know, Julian Godfrey engines and that. I used to compete with Julian all, all the time. He, he'd win one event, I'd win the other, he'd win one, I'd win the other. Like. And then what they were trying to stop when they brought these Suzuki Swifts out was you'd have the... I, I, I used to make super finals in 205. And Julian used to make super finals at 205, so you'd have all these cars like I'm driving now, you know, but particularly in wet and everything, they'd all be battling it wet, and they'd like the 205s would just be gone, wouldn't they? You know what I mean? They were like cruising around, they'd be flying. And then what was what was what they were trying to avoid was having and it's always like three, two and three, you know, the the grid. So you'd have all these supercars and then you'd have Julian Godfrey, Pat Duran, and Tony Lynch on back row in two oh fives and what they were saying was it was like we, we couldn't get good TV because you had these old knackers like you know but, but the more knackers were like we're doing the pace you know what I mean like but they were still all knackers but the very first one here's a funny tale for you if you're talking about well, I'm a bit spineless really all these tales I keep telling aren't I? but this one I was really spineless it was the first time I'd made a super final and uh, and, and funnily enough and it was me Pat Duran and, and Julian on, on Barrow and uh like I say, so it was down at Lidnil, and Lidnil, you probably about 300 yards, and it's a right hander onto gravel. And uh, so it sets off, and I'm ringing neck out of this little 205, you know, and I'm going into second gear. As I'm going into second gear, Pat Duran, obviously, his last at corner, apart from me and Julian, he's just going onto this gravel. And I'm thinking, flipping out, you know, where have they gone? Like, you know, so as I'm going, you then it goes round, it goes it goes a couple of bends and it goes up this hill and so you're up in round, you come all the way down this other side of this hill. And as I'm coming down the other side of this hill, I can see the first supercar going up to the side of the hill. And I'm thinking, Perfect, he's gonna come past me in a minute, isn't that? If he's out like that that Orton guy, I'm in trouble like, you know what I mean? <laughs> so I get to the bottom of the hill and I'll be dead honest, I pulled off and I pulled up and I parked up and I watched it. 
And then, you know what, what I did? Well, I lived and learned. Because I watched Julian Godfrey carry on going round last. And if he wasn't being lapped, there was another car breaking down. And then he'd get lapped and another car break down. And I watched Julian Godfrey, Spartans Wigginer, go to fourth overall because everything else broke down. And that's that's when I lived and learned. And I thought, right, don't be so, so Spartanless anymore. Just, you know, just keep chipping away. But I did, I thought, freak, but you've got to live and learn. That was, a, that was a big, big day for me, you know what I mean? To make me my first super final, I was, I was made up anyway. And I did, I just bottled it. I came off bottom of the hill where you go to grab, and I just pulled off. But I pulled off and got out watch, so I wanted to do it. But then when I watched Julian crack on, I thought, I mean, another cup, he could have won it, could have, they all broke down. So I thought, right, never again. So another living and learning curve for me. So what but, made you jump from the production class to the, the modified class? Because I guess the budget was just... Well, blocking. as I said earlier, modified, when my first time in... Rallycross, when I was Steve, whatever, it was an over-challenge, and yeah. that was like the entry level, if you will. It was really subsidised, it was really good, and it was really accessible. The production cars were the same, and as I say, in 2009, uh, the end of 2009, that's when they said, I think I started this tail and drifted, sorry about that. So, 2009, they said, right, next year, you've there's, there's no production cars, you can't, all these old knackers, that's what they're trying to get rid of them, you've all got to have a Suzuki Swift. And Peter Gwynn Motorsport got involved. He was he was running them. I'll never know the ins and outs, but I'm going to tell you a tale now that I think that it was subsidised by by Pat Duran. I don't know if anybody knows the name of Pat Duran, but he's Mr. Rallycross in the UK. He owns he likes so. He uh, anyway, there were twenty grand these cars, and I didn't have twenty grand like I had a Peugeot. It was a good one, so I sold it for six because it was championship winning top dog like you know what I mean. I remember selling it for <laughs> six, six grand, and. Uh, but I tried everything, you know, I mean, I knew that I could hire it out X amounts of money and raise a 20 grand by, you know, all the 10 events, but I needed the 20 grand now, you know, to compete. So it got within a couple of months and I'd been in touch with like the Durands and everything, saying, so listen, do us a favour, give me 20 grand, let me buy me this car, and this is how you can sell it, you can, you can hire it out. So by the end of the year, I'll have your 20 grand back, but I need it now, you know what I mean, not, not the end of next year, like. Anyway, and it fell on deaf ears. <laughs> so, so to be fair, I thought, right, um, I'd looked at, at, at like rallying again, I'd heard all the lads, and but I still had a competitive edge here with me. So I thought, right, I can't go back doing BTIDA club and stuff, being twice British champion, and uh, you know, you'd be pot hunting, wouldn't you, like, but if we take 12 months or two years out building another car, nobody will know Tony Lynch again, and then we can just crack on, because we did enjoy it. But see, what one thing I am drifting here, but I'll get back to it. But one thing with the team, what I, what I discovered was when I'd been ill and I got back to competing, um, one of the events I'd done was was uh, am, I, am, I, am I going on though? No, I'm not no, taking no, too long. No, 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 sorry. So um, <laughs> no, one thinking. one of I did Epping anyway, and you'll all most of you, some of you'll know maybe and where. So you're that high up, rain's coming that way, innit? And we're servicing them on maybe and where. And I've got a different take look on life, don't forget. You know, I've had four years out, I haven't been very well. And I'm off a guy called Simon Hunter was navigating for me at the time. Uh, if he's any good, talk to me, everything always rubbish, now you do with me. <laughs> so, like, we'd go off and do our 30 miles of rail and come back in and had a great time. And obviously, both my engineers were still getting over it. Like, they'd come out that van, and you could see them drag themselves out that van soaking wet through from last time they got in that van and then I think well are they doing that because they enjoy it or they're doing that because they're doing me a favour you remember so on the way home that's when we had like team chat and I said listen you know are you doing it he said listen whatever you did we'd, we'd, we'd follow you like we'd do and I said right anyway that's when I bought Baines' car and everything because of that so so getting back to me why did I go with the Suzuki's is the lads enjoyed the rallycross rather than the rallying so we needed to do something as a team because as I said I'm no mechanic whatsoever so if there's if there's nobody helping me I, I, I ain't doing you know what I mean um, so we needed to stop in my opinion we're stopping rally stopping rallycross so what we did my six grand I bought two 106s one was a track day car one was a, a road car we were going to build a, like a 106 rallycross car and go doing production in, in you know in BTRDA again because don't forget this beat this production then had had gone out the MSA championship you know they were trying to get rid of all them all knackers like but there was loads of them so 
two weeks before, Patna Ran rang me up and says, Tony, we want you on, on grid like with these Suzuki's. Told him what I just told you, man, you know what I mean? The tail had done and ah, leave it with me. So then these cars are 20 grand, don't forget. And he says, right. He rings me up again and says, right, ah, Liam's got one. Liam Duran, like world champion there. Never beat me, by the way, in production class, just had that one. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he says, listen, ah, Liam's got one. Um, blah, blah, blah. He, he let you have it for 10 grand. I says, part of some skin, you know, I've, I've got rid of my, my six grand and I'm building away, I bought my bits and I'm, I'm done now. Right, leave it with me. Anyway, next minute, I guess a phone call. And it was Peter Gwynn. And he, he said he quizzed me, he asked me loads of questions about stuff and stuff like that. And went, a very strange phone call, really. But he said, well, obviously, like, would I still compete if I had a car and blah, blah, blah. And yeah, I would. And so it like, just went and disappeared. So, put phone down, very strange. Anyway, you got a week to go to the first round. And I was still tinkering with this 106, the bull's in line. And then he gets, Gwyn phones me up again. And he says, right, if we build you a car, would your team run it? So, uh, yeah, well, like, exactly so long would that take to think about it? <laughs> Two and a half seconds. So I said, and, it, and I was genuinely questioning him, I was not, not questioning him, I was like, had I heard this right? So I said, hang on, so you're going to build me a car and you want my team to run it? Now, he must, he must have saw that me as questioning him, you know, like the cheek of it, like, but I was, I was gobsmacked by this, you know, thinking, give me three seconds to think about it. So he said, well, yeah, 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 he said, but uh, we can't give you no more than £500 a day. Well, I, well, I, I must have asked him that one 20 times. <laughs> so I said, hang on, so you're going to build me a car, man, and teams run it, and you're going to give me £500 a day. Yeah, but you get all your teams, all, you know, all the, all the kit comes out there. They had a, a van going round there. Like, no challenge years ago, you know, they had a all the Suzuki party. He said, well, yeah, yeah. I said, if you were to buy something and it cost you 503 quid, you'd only owe me three quid. And if it's four, I'd owe you three quid, like. <laughs> so, and honestly, I must have asked him. <laughs> I, 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 I think I might have rung him up again and just said, is this right? You know what I mean, like. But anyway, of course I would. So I end up going down to so-called pick the car up one o'clock the day before and test the car. Anyway, uh, great bunch of lads like, well, they, they built 20 of these things, you know what I mean? And uh, man was like next on the list, honestly, it was, it was almost a shell, you know, we rolled up at one o'clock the day before the meeting, you know? And, uh, but rather than like, cause we're, you know, no superstars, I'd never been this particular, so we just, we said, well, we'll make a start. And I can say, I make cups of tea past banners, I can screw things on, but, but the other lads we're making do a bit, can't they? Anyway, um, we're at what is Bill Gwynn's rally school was his premises at the time. So obviously Bill Gwynn knows his place inside out, doesn't he? Well, it's a good job because at two o'clock in the morning, pitch black, Bill Gwynn jumps in this thing and starts thrashing up and down his school. I can't see a thing, me honest, I can't, I can't see me hand in front of my face. And he's going, oh, I can hear this, rah, 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 and I'm thinking, it must be doing all right. And he gets in, he says, that'll do. <laughs> <laughs> we put it on trailer. We go down and I get up in the morning and I was absolutely wrecked and we go out and I can't remember exactly what happened but I broke a beam right, I got, you know, first corner, I'd never, the first time of me driving it was that first corner at Lyndon Hill and I think I got a bit weird, we had a bit of clashing and, and then we discovered the beams weren't like real, real clever and I'd bent a rear beam so you run to the truck, hey Peter have you got any beams, yeah, yeah, bang beam on, carry on. I don't know what happened. I didn't. I don't think I wanted. But I think I was on podium. I think, and uh, you know, everybody was made up. And I went down. I said, "Right, Peter." I said, uh, "Are you going for that beam? Like forgetting about this five hundred quid thing? You know, this, remember the statement of the five hundred quid?" And he says, "Oh, I said, well, they're four hundred ninety-seven pound then, or four hundred ninety-five quid." He says, "I owe you a fiver." I laughed, you know. And I said, <laughs> and, and proud as punch, he said, "No, man, Peter, thanks a lot, man. I love you." Off that. <laughs> and. Uh, and that's gospel truth, and that's that's how it happened. And like I said, and I've been very, very, you know, you talk about being right place, right time. That that was certainly me, right place, right time, because we, we do that year then. Um, oh, there's, a, there's another bit to the end of that. Um, so what would I have been then? I'd be, I'd be 50 then, I think I'm 56 now. So, um, 
you know, as I said earlier, lads want to compete. Of course, you can compete. If you want to get competitive, you know, it costs a few quid. And living that dream of paid drivers or whatever you want to call them is the end of the year. Because uh, obviously Suzuki got, got involved, you know, Mr Miyagi and things like that. So, so at the end of the year, I finished second in Dave Bellamy's morning. Some of you know Dave from Melly and that. So uh, I said, well, yeah, like, thanks. That was fantastic. That. that was, you know, brilliant. Can I have the same deal again? Anyway. He won it. And that was it, and I was down road, and he got the new car, and that was it, Dave Bellaby. And like, and I just thought then, I said, I'm just glad that, you know, have you ever, ever got a tale to tell, like, it's any young kids, if, I'm glad I lived that dream when I was 50, because I weren't bothered. But if I'd have done that at 21, I'm out to chase that dream forever. That's, that's not the, you know what I mean, like, you hear about them being skint, like, but, you know, so yes, competing, it's all, you just got to not, not kid yourself. And I've never spent on it, I've not got, I never have done. And then at the end of 2010, Lucas Oil had helped me for a while anyway with, with oil and what have you. And um, so you're supposed to be asking me questions here. I'm sorry about this. I just oh, keep cracking on now. But, um, so then Lucas Oil rang me up and said, like, like what are you doing this year? Which is then with 2011, like. And I said, well, but I've lived and learned then, and I've lived and learned all this. So, like, my mates and they're classed as a team, aren't they? They were just still my mates, are you and me? When these people look from the outside, you know, we've always tried to present to ourselves well, do you know what I mean? Like I say, but you don't I'm just just like the rest of us, just me and you and just, just a gang of lads, aren't we? From outside it was the team, are you with me? So I lived on a few you know, a little bit. So the statement to them was and this is from America obviously, I'm sponsored by Lucas Oil UK, but Lucas Oil America distribute money worldwide here with me to who, who feels warrants it like so um so at the end of the year and obviously it was on eurosport did you know we did well then we was on telly a lot uh in cars you know lucas oils everywhere i also learned that lucas oils are not bothered about you winning you can roll your car every meeting as long as it goes lucas oils lucas oils lucas oils lucas oils lucas oils, lucas oils. <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 you know what I mean. I've learned that they bothered like. So I'd also, I'd also learned that bit as well. So I said, right. So, sorry. I put a sticker on these car, and I, hey, I still have, and I still always will. It's a bit of, you know, one of them touch wood things. I still do it now. We painted, we put it. While we've had a ten week break, we've had the engine out in the box checked and that, and uh, the other lads wanted to do a bit of ceiling last night and anyway while the engine was out you know that where the manifold goes down I put one there as well it won't last 20 seconds will it but it seemed a good <laughs> idea at the time you know but if anybody takes a picture down there it's got one I have them everywhere mate like, just, if you get a chance if there's a gap on your car bang a Lucas oil sticker on it they love it look at that you know I mean that's every, that'll, be, that'll be out somewhere tomorrow you just it's all about we sponsors promoting I've lost my way now. What was the question? I was on the best of Zuki well, Swift, was I? Before you go on to that, we'll just have a 10 minute beer break. Right. And uh, everybody can get another drink and uh, them just need a fag and we'll have one. Remember, <laughs> remember the question because I forgot it. <laughs> <laughs> what was that so, last question? Can you remember? It was, it was the Suzuki's and the spot sponsorship. <laughs> where, where had I got up to? <laughs> up, what happened, like? on, I've got limited memory. <laughs> I'm not not quite as old as you, but I'm getting yeah, there. Yeah. Um, so you just landed on the. Uh, well, no, you'd you've been lucky enough to get the Lucas uh, back oh, in. Oh, that's for it. A few no, years, I remember now. That, then that's how I was telling you there. I was telling you how Lucas came on board, and that's where it got to. That so, was it. That was right. Yeah. So. 2010, yeah, Suzuki's my first time. We'd finished second. David won it. So, uh, Lucas rang me up and said, like, what are you doing right next year? And because I'd lived in London, I said, right, well, I'm in similar boat. I haven't got a car. I've got the team to run it. I've got all the other smaller sponsors, like, but I need the car. And then they said, well, send us a package. At that part, I didn't know what, what was a package like. You know, I had to live in London. So what they meant, obviously, was a, you know, a portfolio sponsorship package. So... Um, Got one of them together, sent them over, and then they sent me a check over and bought me that car. That that, that same car, like. Um, and that was that year, and then I've never owned a car since 2010. Lucas Oils have bought me, like I said, Suzuki Swift. Uh, 2010, 11, 12, 
think 2013, so the Christmas of 2012, I think it was, uh, the Cooper S, the minute, the minute, had just sold it half a million car over in America or a million car, whatever it works, and they got in touch and said, listen, we want to run, you know, BMW Mini. Uh, we just rebuilt the Suzuki Swift with their funding, ready for that year, and then with about six weeks to go, they said, we're going like, to run a, a BMW Mini. And there was the production BMW Mini class going, we didn't have that many in it, and I thought, well, it might not be a bad thing because they're for nothing, really. You, know, you could get 20, you should get 20 or 30 cars in it, and it should be a good class to be in. And if, if we can live and learn it like now, um, then hopefully, when it's when there's 20 and 30 cars, I can, I've done all my living and learning, and we can be like the you know, thin end of the wedge and ride up there and you, you use that to promote ourselves and being a winner, like, innit? Anyway, I was just telling some of the lads there, we, um, what had happened with that car was, we were, it never really took off the class and we were running the same eight all the time, so the same eight just one grid, so like every race was a final, we needed to, I didn't feel that from their point of view, yes, they wanted to run a BMW Mini, but I was looking after myself thinking they're going to get bored with this, it's not very good for PR, are you with me? So, uh, we put our foots down and like, managed to win that class that year. So I could then ask to them, uh, could we perhaps go modified with it? Um, I did ask about going, uh, this is, I was talking to some of the lads there a minute ago, but I'll say this tale, because I did think, right, I'm, I'm, on this, I'm on this banner now, I'm on this roll of supercars, you know, let's try and get a supercar, like. So I... You were just trying to keep up with Simon, weren't you? <laughs> I can't remember the time Sam was into that then, then. I know he might have been. It'd be just about the time he was starting. Yeah, well, I was, so obviously I knew Julian pretty well, uh, Julian Godfrey, and I had a word with him. And even in them days, apart from like what's going on at the minute with you know, professionalism where it's gone, and even in them days, he said, you need to be looking at 10 grand a race. And if you like Duran, 15 grand a race, because he's a bit heavy on gearbox. So, so I said, <laughs> So, you know, and you look at it, so I thought, well, that's only, it's all over £100,000 a year. So, I think I did put something together for it. I didn't, I don't think I actually put a portfolio together. I think I sort of like, because obviously I'd got to know Lucas Oil UK then quite well, even though they said, forget it, like you're kidding yourself, you know what I mean? They're not <laughs> going to do that. And, and his, his words were, and I'll be dead on it, his words were, he says, if you were successful, Tony, he says, and no disrespect, he says, but at your age, he says, if they did, because they obviously did they do with some lads, you know what I mean? He says, but, if if they did, he said, you'd have to be winning. He said, do you want that pressure, like? And like I said before, what I'd learned, as long as it's doing that, going Lucas, 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 with what I do, they're happy enough, aren't they? But if they're spending that kind of money, and they obviously spend that only, you know, there's, there's millions worldwide. Um, so so that's how, the reason how I got into Modified was because I knew they wanted to run a mini. I didn't really want to have to start paying. Um, but what was I going to do with this mini? So what I did is, I thought, right, I will build a brand new <coughs> production car and I'll go back. What, what had happened then was, they'd realised that, I know they wanted to bring the Swifts in, and the Swifts were successful and still are successful. But what it did do was, every organisation, clubs got to run events on without a loss. So what it did do was wipe, wipe like 30 production cars out, you know, two or fives and one or six and what have you. So they were struggling for entries. So they sort of like let them back in. Um, and I thought, right, so the, the production class was still there. They then called it hot hatch instead of stock hatch. Stock hatch being as in they thought, because the top gear thing being bangers, you know, stock cars. So they called it hot hatch. And I thought, right, so I, and again, with her, with her funding, we built a brand new Cooper S. Um, it was going to be, I did see a loophole in regulation because it said it forced induction is to be used, it has to be main standard. Um, obviously you got a coefficient of whatever on it. I then get it in writing from the MSA saying that, you know, obviously with this coefficient, because the regulation says if you know, it must remain standard, I'm out, yeah, yeah, you're okay. So I build it. Two weeks before, they change the regulations. Two weeks before, he'll start telling you they can't do that. In fact, I had a conversation with you, do you remember? A yeah, bit, bit of advice off a man who knows what he's doing, isn't it? <laughs> so, <laughs> we... Uh, <laughs> anyway, it, it, got, it got to work. I had to take the MSA to court. Uh, 
because he changed regulations and Lucas Oil said, listen, we're in this for foreign PR. We don't want to, you know, I didn't want to go to court anyway. You know, he came down to the MSA and said, listen, everything I'd done was right, you know what I mean? They changed the regs. An individual, who yeah. will be an individual who is a volunteer, so I appreciate that because I only help once a year with that. You know, I used to help a lot more than I used to, but I understand, you know, people are volunteers and they need to help. And so an individual's made a mistake, can he? You know what I mean? He's just wrote some regs, we're supposed to have. I think he thought that Mini Q press was going to be dominant, you know, because it would have been 160 horsepower, but it weighed 1150 kilograms. Then 106 is we're knocking out, I think their weight then was 800 kilograms. So power to weight, we'd have been there, but you wouldn't have been dominant at all, are you with me? So, but anyway, he obviously made his decision, and I knew the loophole was there from 1400 turbos, you know, like years ago. And uh, so I was I was stuck then with, I built a brand new car, nowhere to go, so I had to go back to Lucas Oils and say, well, listen, this is what we're up to, we've got to take him to court. Didn't know we're not into that. So I said, how about going doing BTIDA modified, because uh, the British modified car super, and that's what I said, how about going be doing BTIDA? But there ain't no TV. So they said, well, you'll have to go and do that, like, uh, and then we'll have to have a look at it next year. So obviously I was under a bit of pressure then, wasn't I? Because I'd got into this, like, not paying for it to like that bit, you know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, it was like, what am I going to do? So we put a bit of a cam in it and we put a couple of bits on it and, like, we got it to, like, 200 horse, just over 200 horse power. And... Uh, God, it was like I'd been driving 100 horsepower stuff for all them years. I drove 200 horse again, and bloody hell, it was brilliant. Like, you know, I loved it. But if you really wanted to be competitive, you, know, like, you needed 300 horsepower. So we tried all kinds to try and get this minute to start again involved with asking your mate at Mini Sport and stuff like that. You know what I mean? And it was just the rallycross is because it's such a sprint thing. You know, you're not looking over 20 miles. You just bang, you just need it there and then, you know, get it at first corner and then that's a half a job in it and then keeping them as rare. So I managed to win the over two litre class in, in the clubman's thing. And the following year, I had basically, what you've got to remember now is they'd give me money to build a car. We built a car, but then give them no TV and, or, or nothing for it really, you know what I mean? I did I did shows and stuff like that with them, the Autosport Arena and stuff like that. And, but I hadn't really given value for money. So the following year, we went to the MSA, which was, uh, the MSA Championship, which we were like last year, on a very, very limited budget because I'd already had the money the previous year and done nothing with it. Does that make sense? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So consequently, I was then wanting to make the most of it because, you know, I didn't want to let anybody down. I felt guilty the fact that I'd spent all the money on this other car. It was nothing to do with me really, it was just it worked. And by this time I'd, I'd got a, I don't like to say this, but I'd, I'd, I'd got a, I'd set myself a standard, I? you know what I mean? And we'd, we'd put ourselves in that kind of environment where we were looked upon, you know, we were quite, quite respectful if that's the word. In, in, in the you, in, why not? You know, so like, so we thought, right, so we knew it perhaps weren't enough power but like we'll go and give it a go because in, in, in its certain conditions you'd you'd do okay if it was raining and whatever you'd do alright but we, so we thought right we need it we need first thing was a gearbox you have a thousand dollars but you can't put it to the floor in it so we started getting involved with gearboxes uh, not sequentials but straight cut close ratio stuff um, we, just, we kept breaking down anyway, nothing was like strong enough, we wouldn't put up with the, with the power we were trying to put through it. Uh, but again on its day, we was over in Ireland and we won Ireland and, and very often in rally crossing you can win because everyone else is breaking down. This was a genuine one where we qualified on pole, we put it on pole, we won the race there to finish. And and I put that down to the only day, it was a, it was a two day meeting as well, so it was a one, one event on the Saturday, one event on the Sunday. So. You know, we, we were overjoyed, we were made up, um, but then coming back into the car park, it was sort of going like, tuk, 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 and I thought, the draft shaft or something going, you know. So I pulled into it, as I could do, it was a noise down there, you know what I mean, like, sorted out. So um, they, they were doing all and I'd had a bit of an incident, it was on quite quite popular on TV, really. It was somebody, I was off Paul, somebody had been on the third row, tagged the second row man, and as he set off, he tagged his back end and he went, 
I hadn't done 20 yards and I had passenger door caved in like obviously production car still running glass so that was like smashed over the place like I said got lots of t- it was a good thing for the TV because it went it went everywhere and uh, but what had happened from it the lad said right well if you're going to be fixing this door I'll change this shaft so they do that something's gone because I say it was, it was we were doing a bit then so there's no that meal at the hotel the lads had gone kebab shop hadn't they and come back we're all eating it so they said right let's wrap up we'll, we'll, we'll grab a pint so young lad he gets in it just to turn it round so it's the right way around in the tent in the morning and uh, tuk, 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 still there so, that's, that's strange. anyway it turns out this gearbox gone again so the old one and only event this was like about round four then so the it had lasted obviously longer and obviously when it had done its job it made a massive difference to us but not secure so then they end up working all night because they end up having to change the gearbox put the standard gearbox back in so I could complete the following day and what we did was exactly the same people exactly the same kind of conditions I won and put it on pole on the Saturday I'd all had to qualify for the final and I think I finished I made it and I finished seventh so that proved to us that the gearbox was quite key as you all know anyway but you know when you're driven them it was key like so um, that's when I had to go back to Lucas saying listen if we want to be competitive in that car which you know they still they, 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 they did do like they wanted I said well if you want to be and, and obviously I get frustrated doing it because then I'm making numbers up and if somebody's paying or not you, you know I, I you don't want to make it numbers up like so uh, they sort of I said right well you know if that's what we need to do we need to do so Anyway, a lot of them, if because I had an R53 model, if I'd had an R56 model, I'd have been okay. That pretty stuff was pretty much off the shelf. Because I had an R53 model, it meant me having like you know, a few people would like do you the the box, but they had to do the shafts there, and you know they had to do everything. Anyway, the best deal I could get was uh, Sadef. They got involved in a bit. Eulen was 17 and a half grand. That was today just for that. Sad F got down to I think it was 30 and a half grand. So, uh, you know, like, bottom line is, you'd be, but if you didn't have one, you'd be making numbers up. We still wanted another 100 horsepower as well, but, you know, one thing at a time, innit? So, uh, we, we were just going to commit to this, and we'd got the financial backing from Lucas Oils to go out and do it, like, and then I knew this, this car that I've got now is, is, is a Ford KA. Um, the regulations are possibly likely to change at the end of this year uh, with that type of car and I think the lad was like I was with the Cosium many years ago I think he wanted to get shut before he got stuck with it really you know what I mean so I knew him I got talking to him box was about nine grand if you want it it's so many grand so I go away to New Burn, I go away to Newcastle he starts telling me the tale I'm thinking of selling it, blah, blah, blah. And I'd seen this car advertised like a few times and like with a lot of money. And he said, where I feel now, you know one of them jokes, which you never know, he said, where I feel now, he says, if someone give me 20 grand, he said, I'd take it. I thought, I've not got 20 grand, I've got 13 and a half, you know what I mean, like. So I thought, <laughs> I had a word, and I said, well, and I told him, I said, well, listen, what and, and I just, I don't know, we just got talking, I showed some interest. Anyway, I went for the gearbox, and within a week, I bought the car for 15 grand. So 13 and a half, it was obviously was going to be for the box. So I've still got the box that I could use in my car, in my, in my mini, if you will. And then I got back onto Lucas Oils and I said, listen, we've got the opportunity with this car. I know it's not a BMW mini, but blah, blah, blah. And sold them the dream like you do, you know what I mean? They got back from and they, and they sent me the money over and yeah, and we bought it. So, uh, but the, and this is the one that you haven't said to me before, because they bought me the car, and obviously this class is 2D for me. So they bought me the car and gave me a budget. But they also said, but well, you've got to be on the podium. And that's the first time since 2010 they've actually turned around and said that to me. Now, when I was talking to Steve a little earlier, that's where I'm glad I'm 56, because I'm miles more relaxed. <laughs> <laughs> because I think if you'd have done that a few years ago, the Suzuki's... I think I put myself under pressure. Um, no one, no one said to me I needed to be on any podiums or nothing like that, and I was like desperate to win, and and I realised it's, it's the wrong way. Now, 
I'm win- I am winning the championship. I haven't won an event yet. I've been close. I'm pretty convinced I perhaps will do by the end of the year. But it's just by, you know, chipping away and always being there. So if I'm coming back doing this next year saying I've won it, it's because I've been relaxed. But, I, and I, but I, I'm glad I am, if you think that makes sense. Yeah. Because I think I might have, like, over the years, I know that I've been been panicking about trying to win. And then you, you always must have all heard the term, you overdrive a guy. And, and it's true, you do. And But I think I'm, I think I'm in a good place. You know, I'm not saying I'm going to win it, but I'm... You know, I'd like to think that um, with the drops goes now, young Paige Bellaby, she's won two. She won at Pembury the other week, but I was the first across the line when I overtook her, but I went taking my joker lap because there was nobody with me. I thought, oh, I'll do my joker lap while, while, I, while I can. But then it got red flagged for whatever reason somewhere else. And then it goes back one full lap. So she was the first, you see, to cross the line then because I had knobbed off and done my joker lap, hadn't I? So again, lesson learned because if I'm ever in that predicament again, I'd never do my joker lap till last lap. If if I haven't done it, if I'm in front, but not done my joker lap, I wouldn't do it now. But again, you've got to live and learn, haven't you? So I was doing my joker lap, she was crossing the line, she won and she was behind me. So you make that one out, but rules is rules, aren't they? <laughs> so, um, but I, I'm sure, uh, you know, if all goes well, I'm sure that uh, the next one's Belgium. Belgium hasn't been good to me. I've, they call it devil circuit. And... I've been over a few times. It's always come back in a cardboard box. So I got the car, I got the K stops as it is. I've taken three Suzuki's in a minute. They've all come back in a cardboard box. So I don't know what it is about Belgium. Don't like me. <laughs> but hopefully next time round, I'll be telling you, job's gone good. So you, you've you've talked about all this fabulous sponsorship you've had with Lucas, but and I can't help noticing it's bigger on your shirt than Lucas. And I remember distinctly it being on the car. At Fluke, we all them years ago. Pemberton Tires. Pemberton Tires, good mate to man. He, going back, the oh, bloody hell, I can't remember what year, but the days was not going to be with you. Uh, and a navigator then, Paul Burton. Um, I'd had a few navigators, because uh, like I said, don't forget, we only started rallying for a bit of fun because I couldn't sell this Mark II. Um, Paul just joined our motor club. Probably the only lad with a Britain, really, when I think when you look back, because we, you know, I had a few navigators, like I said, doing bits of single venues, and Paul must have been with me, was he? When I think he was, he yeah. must have been. I think he was because he, he he turned me in to a better driver by having a, proper equipment, if you will. And the story goes that he was the lad who, like I said, went to the club. He lived he lived up the road. weren't weren't really involved with us, but he just walked past Gary's now and again. He worked at he mowed the grass at the park if I'm being honest with you he runs the budget now because we can count but at the time he, he mowed the grass and uh, he used to walk past garage he'd give us a lift and then this this one day we wanted to do a rally and it was I think it was run by a 108 car club and it was at Donington Park and it's when the did you remember that there was a TV Times I think sponsors like a bit of a racing car against racing driver against rally driver situation so the, the rally stage was on like the car park, fairly gravelly. So my wife said, well, it's only right. You ask that young lad if uh, navigate for you. He's always coming giving you a lift and you never take him anywhere and blah, blah, blah. So I went across the road, knocked on the door, said, do you fancy navigating for me? Yeah, 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 I belt him. And uh, <laughs> what happened then was we just Donington Park. We are doing OK. We're coming around this corner. And there's just this straw bale there, that, and I've got a big brody on it, Lord. brilliant, and there's just this straw bale, it's only a straw bale, isn't it? But I didn't know the straw bale was covering the ramp to the gas bottle, you know what I mean? So if you've ever actually wanted to see a video as much as I have, because what happened is we're coming here right-hander, 90 right, gravel, Mark two rear-wheel drive, full drift on, not bothered about the straw bale, because I think I'm just going to clip it like, anyway, I clipped it, Put me on like like Swifty on side, and eventually just rolled over and it slid on its thing. And windscreens, you know, windscreens popped out. Cars falling with stones. I've I've been over before, like so. I've thought like know what I'm doing, so I undo belts. I'm all over the roof like a big whale, and I, and I get out, <laughs> get it back on its wheels. Now this young lad, don't forget, never done a rally in his life, and it was the days we still had BCF. So 
you roll it onto four wheels, get all crowded there, banging on four wheels. I lift the bonnet, just to, just, just a bit of a safety check in it. So as you lift the bonnet up, Mark, you've got this 16 inch gap, aren't you, underneath? There's no windscreen in. And Mark, you look there and go, BCF. I'm like, oh, oh, my cabs, but all we don't think. And young Paul's still strapped in car. So young Paul's like, <laughs> <laughs> so took all oxygen out of her. He still has got full seats on. He's <laughs> and I'm thinking, I hope it'll last till we get that because we're going in a minute. Like, anyway. And then Doctor opens door. Somebody could think, that's doing that. So what says, you'll have to wait for that. He's off. What do you mean? Boom, I'm gone. <laughs> so we get to the finish, like, and uh, again, same old crew of lads. They start. Bob it back windscreen out because you can carry on them days. I don't know if you can now, like, but if you've got goggles, you take your back windscreen out, goggles of eyes, you can carry on. So I, um, I said, Rick, go on. And, and his brother in law was a company called CTI UK at the time, I was big into tires at the time. So I said, Go we'll see your kid and see if you can borrow a pair of goggles. So I said, What for? I said, Because we're due out in a minute. You know, <laughs> he said, We're not going out again. He said, We are. Anyway, we get to, we get to the start, man. And I am coming to Pem Tires, by the way. <laughs> so we get we get to the start line, and he, he hands time card out through windscreen, you know what I mean? Like, cause there's, no, cause there's no windscreen in. So this thing, and then, and then how, it, how it set off at down, I don't know if anybody know the old car park, but it sets off at top of the river and it goes down to an old Irpin. So we set off, no windscreen in. And he was just about to say something, wasn't it? We get to the top of Irpin. Not driving a motorbike, isn't it? With that, <laughs> so, he gets, <laughs> so, so he gets all road round, and I'm giving him a bollock and says, Shine on, lad, you're not good as a navigator. If you're not going to say anything, you know, you're supposed to talk, tell me like where we're going. He said, Tell you where we're going. I went to it. I couldn't say a word. I said, Freaking hell. I says, Reed, I said, I'll tell you what then. I says, You were, um, because I got a visor on. I says, We'll swap over. I use goggles, you use visor. <laughs> so he says, Right. So he sets off. Doesn't shut visor, does it? Go up here. Over at the same break, because there's always two stages the same, isn't there? Like, over, next minute, whap! So he's there, he is, he's got this visor, and he's like, this is care. And he's like, and I said, you know, Paul, I said, you've got me sorting this out, lad, lad. you want me navigating for me, you know what I mean? Because uh, you've got me telling me where we're going, you know? Well, anyway, we get to end it there, and we, we get a little trophy for try right there, and all that kind of caper, and, and, Anyway, he loved it, didn't he? He absolutely loved it. So we're, we're build, we 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 have to reach. I don't think we sheltered. We have to be per car. And then he starts talking sense, Paul, because we used to drive on anything that was black and rain. And then Paul says, "Listen, he says you need to be going." And I don't know if they're still knocking about now. There was a Mitchell and TB15, I think they were, and there was somebody <laughs> selling selling four of these tyres. And I'm, I remember Paul going out and buying buying them, and uh, we put them on. So we was always like. They're there about but never won anything, you know what I mean? And I put them on, so same lads, same car, different tyres, and that's when we started winning. And I thought, oh, bloody hell, Paul. And then Paul went on to get his Pemberton tyres, and what happened was he was sponsors, and he, he'd started off by, and he got us tracking and balancing. So, like, you bought your tyres, you know what I mean, and you put them on, and he'd give you free tracking and balancing, I think it was about four quid then. Well, that was a big thing, saving four quid then, you know, so like, you <laughs> took us out of town, save four quid, and then he'd buy you a couple of tyres, and it got better, and then me and Paul became a team, met you, we were doing our artwork in them days. Fucking hard. He would. He was on new tyres, and we were on old or early tyres. Well, I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll tell you about that in a minute, because that's another one, because like I said, right place, right time, I've, over my, my years, I've dropped on, and uh, he would, with his pound tyres thing, he, he just, he turned around, and, but I want to get to Paul for a minute because I Paul became as good as he did and I was at that some forest, I think it was Grazie or whatever and I remember him going over, over a brow and he says, flat over brow into 45 left. So I like, yeah, and you know, you're going over there and the biggest pile of logs you've ever seen in your life and it's 45 left so he goes, into 45 left and he's like, it's a big 90 reel and I said, bloody hell Paul, I says, I knew you could do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that was and that was like kind of rapport we had like because he was that good. But um with Pemberton Tires what happened there was he started off with tracking and balancing, then he bought us like a, a couple of tires. And then we became we put it over to him as Northwest Champions. What we was was S D thirty four champions, but we sold it, we started selling. You know what I mean? Sounds good though, don't you? You're not Northwest Champion, aren't you? S D thirty four. 
So he started selling us as Northwest champions, and Paul's doing all this and his misses. So then this Pemberton Tiger says, and obviously we got fairly friendly with Pemberton Tigers, and I still go to Pemberton Tigers today, still on there, and I see him only today because he owes me some money. No, but bottom line is, he turned up one day, we, we, we became SD34 champions again a second time. So we sold ourselves as double Northwest champions. And uh, he said, Rice, I want, I want total control on your tyres. Total control, what was, what's that mean? I'm thinking, hang on, you know what I mean? What's total control? And what you've just said is the reason we had brand new rubbers. I started an event every time on brand new rubber, but he, he bought them us, but he sold them as well. So he was always getting revenue on them, you with me? So at the end of the year, so it was good for him, but it was great for me. And, and it was, wasn't it, because you'd been there, and I would be last, very often I would win rallies by either first stage or last stage, because it was either first stage because we'd been, because we could afford to go and do, you know, one like week after the other, or the end of it, when everybody's tires were knackered, and we'd drag a brand new set out. And that's where we were very lucky. I don't, listen, I know that I've had a, you know, I'm not best driver in the world, but, you know, you've had, um, if you've been as lucky as I am, I would say, really. A lot of lads come by the way in, and I truly haven't bought my way into anything, but I have, I've been very lucky in, you know, in, in help. And I, but what I've n never done is, so with Botty, for instance, I would never ask Botty, uh, Botty's Pemberton tyres, by the way, I never asked Alan for any tyres, if you know what I mean. He, he, he came up with it, you know, he suggested it. And and it's all right, you know, you look at these, you might need something. No, no, I'm all right with them, I'll, I won't need them for the. And if I had new tyres, that's because he suggested I have them. I would never disrespect anybody. Same with them now. But I, what I did find is, over the years, when I was talking to somebody just earlier, though it was you, what I did find is, with sponsorship was, I did used to try and get portfolios years ago and try and, you know, sell them stuff that wasn't probably truly there, you know what I mean? And So you never fulfilled anything. But since I've been a dead honest, I have found, I've, I've been, been able to be myself, be honest, not pretend that I'm anything I'm not like. And, you know, even on my crash helmet now, I've got the Wigan, I have a Wigan coat of arms and Lancashire Rose, and I've got, you know, Wigan lad, I'm proud of it. And you know you, you might have an accent. I was joking earlier. Says folk thinks I'm Spanish, but I might have an accent. <laughs> but I'm proud of where I'm from. You know, I'm proud of what we do. I'm proud of uh, like being a Lancashire boy. And you don't need to add that. And I think since since you've been honest with folk, is you sell them something that they take you on or you don't. But as long as you can, what you've sold them is true, because that's that's what you're doing. If you get sponsored, you're selling like. So that's how Pam Tires came in, tracking and balancing, and after five or six years, total control. Them. And I, and I can't say I've, I've ever bought a tyre since, and still with me. Brilliant. He has put, yeah, he has put me... Yeah, what, what did he say then? What's the question then? Right, he has put me on a budget, that gives you a clue, doesn't it? <laughs> he just told you, Terry. No, he since, doesn't pay for tyres. Since, <laughs> since I've gone into... Because he used to love the production class, because we could have brand new rubbers every time in the production class and cost you 224 quid brand new rubber because they were 56 pounds now now I'm on a budget now because it was a, like last year was the first year we did modified and I did try various tyres and there's an, a, an a, a, a one tyre the if, if you're doing like you've got to be on these Avon tyres and they're 220 quid a time oh so it's it's a grander race but I never thought I'd be there like I said yes I am on a budget but you don't, because now, you see, they have one tyre, so it's one slick tyre and they cut it. So I know we've got, like, obviously I've got a set of slicks. I have two out and out wets and I have two intermediates. Because uh, at the back, I always run intermediates, which is a slick with just a small groove in. And then, pardon me, but I, I, I will, if it's, if it's a nice day, I will run slicks all around, so... Even with that, I try and control it because, and again, if the one about if he was buying me, if he was buying me every time, I still wouldn't waste his money. Are you with me? I've still, I treat it as my own, and, and he knows that as well, and that's why he's supporting me. Like, I mean, yes, he is a friend, but he has done all right out of helping us as well. You know, he does wheels. He never did any wheels like until years ago. Supported us, and I always remind him that he said he's selling wheels to all them kids because of me. <laughs> So that, that's how Pem Tires came I'll on. I'll tell you what, I don't see Quick Track on your shirt. 
You mentioned Simon before. <laughs> Simon is quick like I. Uh, that's, that, 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 that's, that, that, that's Lyndon future? Burton's business, I think, isn't it? Is it? Yeah, it's Lyndon Burton's business and Simon. He never lets that on. <laughs> no, he. Um, what's his name? Alan. Alan. The guy started that. He used to drive. I think he just used to drive a Subaru estate or something. Alan. I can't think of his name, and I'm drifting in. But there was another guy who started that with Lyndon Burton, but didn't do very well, and he invited to. Because, right, Simon was looking for coke and. Obviously, like I said, well, he said he navigated him for me. Um, he did his first rally with me, Sam, and I just did he. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, he did, he did his first rally with me and got got. You know, we did well. I mean, there's a funny tale. We went off on the uh, what, what they call us that, that rally in Scotland. What's that one called? It's in British Championship. Not the other one, Jim Clark. Jim Jim, Jim, Clark. Jim Clark, isn't it? We did that, Jim Clark. I'll tell you about that in a minute. That was funny. And uh, so we quick track. He's, I probably I probably won't ask him because he's you know he's too much of a mate, and you know what I mean. If I didn't, if I didn't know <laughs> quick track, I'd sell I'd sell myself to you. But seeing Sam, I'd leave it be. But the funniest <laughs> thing about Sam was I had two big offers. Sam, one was at Epping, and I'm glad we went in a ditch because like it seemed an awful long way down there. So I'm glad we ended up in a ditch. But the other one with um, up on the the Jim Clark, we were doing our art, and I was in that cosy at town, and we'd done a. You know, two litre class, and we caught a couple of cars up back, and we just going faster and faster, really. And, and who's drivers here and who's navigators? Because you drivers, obviously, navigators must must be loads of times when people don't take them on. But he told me this thing. He says, "Ninety right, you're going under trees, and you know it'll be slippy." And yeah, yeah, I'm sorted. But I was on a mission winner for some reason. I was listening to him, and and I did take it in, but I just underestimated it. Anyway, 90 right, straight on, in trees, and one of the only things I can think of, as soon as you mentioned Simon on, uh, sorry, um, Simon, Simon Hunter, <laughs> is, keep telling me about this 90 right, coming up, coming up, coming up, it's in tree, and all I remember is, oh, me bollocks! That's, <laughs> that, that's, that's the biggest thing I could always remember about Simon Hunter. <laughs> Because he was just thinking, oh, thinking about my car, and they were easily thinking about his bollocks. I'm thinking, flipping heck. And they must do, honestly, we hit it. We were, we were tanking like, we were, we were plonking on. And uh, oh, I hit it, splat bang it, man. I don't even know how I'd done it. It was just disgraceful, really, as a driver. But God, he must have moved about three inches forward. They must have been round here, his things here. That's all I ever remember. Oh, my bollocks! That's all I heard the intercom. Uh, it was funny that. And then we went off at Epint, and. Uh, like I said, I think that, that might have been the day we was all having a bit of a chit chat on the way home, really. You know, do they want to build another rally car? And uh, I think you have to ask me another question because I've got your tails there. Somebody must have a question. Do you actually do you remember um, any rally profits uh, at Longbridge? Did you No, I didn't, no. I, I do believe there was one, though, but no, I, I never, before my time, that. No, before my time, so. There's only you out here old enough to remember that, Terry. <laughs> was it British Championship at the start, right? Like? <laughs> I don't know. There was wasn't it? such a thing as a British Championship. Was there not? Was there <laughs> not? No, no, no. No, I'm sorry, mate. No, I don't. I, don't. I, do, I do believe it was there, but uh, I never did. First memory of Rally Cross, then. Rob Chapman in the. I think. Rally Cross, then. Rob Chapman in the. 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 We used to Alamaki and stuff like that, you know. I used to them with them with the boys in the day, and that Shank I never remember. Martin Shanker, right? yeah, Cross track Shanky, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was um, that 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 trip was pulled the other week. That still happens. That it's good. Yeah. Yeah, because if you if you're the cause of a red flag, you're not you're not excluded anymore, are you? You know, if you cause a red, you know, you may be the cause of a red flag, but doesn't mean that you can't compete. So if your car's off. In a bad place, they decide to, but somebody else could have put you off, couldn't they? Years ago, it was like you're the cause, but you're out. Well, that that doesn't happen now. I've even tried it myself, really. Well, not, not so. <laughs> yeah. so you would have to enough to run across. No, you don't get to care, but you know what I mean. If you're going, like, if, if you care, you're just going. To, I mean, it's, it don't go. It's it's competitive, isn't it? You know what I mean. It is competitive. And just the other week at Pembroke, young Page, put it off. 
because I, I found out like later as to uh, my boys were, were a bit upset because I hadn't won class class with a win at Pembury because of what the tale I just told you. But apparently, in the first run of the final, she was she'd put it off, um, and, and you know, in a, a place that we classed it without the red flag. Was as soon as she got it red flagged, then it drove off and took the grid again. You know what I mean? So fair play. So if I could, I'd have done it myself. I'd have had chances. You know what I mean? But fair play. Bear in mind, this is an eighteen-year-old lass who's like that thin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thinks it tells you all in eighteen, but yeah, she's. Is she she's, now? Yeah, she is now. I, I only remember yeah. being that old. Yeah. <laughs> a younger daughter, a younger sister's at eighteen now. She's, yeah. yeah, she's in Suzuki Swift now. Yeah. Dad's in a supercar. No money, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but he manages to run three cars. Yeah. <laughs> What's the spec of the current car? Two litre. Yeah, it's a mountain engine, uh, Ulan box, space framed, uh, beam on back, um, weighs 830 kilograms with me in it, and the limit is 800 kilograms. Uh, that's well, it's 30 kilograms to come out of it. <laughs> I need to go on a diet, don't I? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, the car probably weighs seven or thirty kilograms. Just only when I get in it, you know what I mean. It's, uh, but it's honestly, it's great. I just, I just love it. I mean, I hope that the reason, another reason I bought it was uh, when I was telling you earlier about the regulation with the the causes where you can't have a, a Ford engine. You know, it had to be a Ford engine and a Ford car and all that. It never happened, did it? I know lads who's still building Mark Twos now and putting valves in them. You know, so if. And, and to be fair, like the MSA are working hard to try and get it because it would wipe out half the class because a lot of you know. So they had what they've done. They put some writing in red in the blue book, and obviously not thought about it, have they? You know, they've taken it from the FIA book, put it in there. But obviously, if it goes to print in, in black, so Cheryl Lynch is working real hard at minute with the crew trying to make sure that the writing is, you know, is either altered or. Put in red again for the following year because it would it would write off half the class. You know, so um, so that's the, the, the spec of the car. Like I said, and I hope that the regulation does. And the reason I bought it was thinking, well, the way the MSA can sometimes have a regulation but then change it. I I, I hope there's a last ban in it because I just I just really enjoy driving it. Um, and I think if I could do well in it, then I think I could sell that to Lucas Oils again. Then that we could carry on it if you know what I mean. Um, but if it doesn't, then like I say, I've still got the mini there that we'll have to we'll have to put our kit into that. Like, cause you you know you, you need more horsepower with the mini. It's his weight, you see. You're not going to get the the mini. My mini on, on it regulation. Car, it? Yeah. It's just at every car. Isn't yeah. It? Well, when it was on the production class, it was a the, the weight limit was eleven eleven fifty five, and it came regular eleven fifty six. You know what I mean? But it was right. Um, and you could take a bit out of it, but you're never going to get it down to it. You know, if you got it down to a thousand kilos, I think you'd be lucky. You know what I mean? It's uh, I mean, I haven't looked that closely at that yet, but I suppose really I'm edging my bets and I'm, I just enjoy driving this car. It's just, don't get me wrong, when I first drove it at Croft this year, I you know, I was a passenger. I'll be honest, I just took off it, pinned me back in seat. Anyway, and I think I spun it in all kinds. I was just, I, was, I would tell you, I was clinging on for dear life first time. I, and then we just, I just needed time, but I never got a chance to drive it. You know what I mean? It was, Literally got in it and drove it, and I say I've been you know, a bit used to it now, and it's great. I mean, we had the Scott Pro Flex suspension on it, and uh, that's all I had Raga suspension because somebody was talking about Pro Flex earlier. Wasn't there? I had Raga suspension on it, and I had all that revalved and everything. That's made a massive difference as well because you know I think somebody who could drive a car better than me had it before. It was a bit, it's a bit more forgiving now, you know. So it's good. It's good. Uh, well, I, I won't say a natural left foot brake. I think if I was doing a rally, I don't think I'd be natural left foot braking. But I, I think I can use that term in rally crossing because you know exactly where you're going, don't you? You know what I mean? It's just the same thing over and over again. So, yeah, I've driven front wheel drive for a long, long time, and I've I've, I've left foot brake for a long, long time. But I don't think I could do it down a country lane. You know what I mean? If like that, these proper lads can. Um, with that particular car. Yes, you still need to. I, I do use my, my clutch going. I've been told to use the clutch going down the gearbox 
it's not a sequential, but I don't know if that's true or not. But I do because I had that much hassle last year with that other gearbox breaking gearboxes. It's made me, you know, a bit afraid of crashing like a lot of money. So I've just had the gearbox out and had it had it away, had it checked, and they said it's fine. So and they they tell me not not to worry, just just get up and down the box. But it's just a fear of I want to use my budget and use it well and it wouldn't take for buying another gearbox and another engine, you know what I mean? And then you have to start getting your own pocket out again, don't you? Like I said, and I've got into... <laughs> like I said, I'm making it sound like I'm tight and I'm not. I just... It's just you, you've got a budget and if you'd be a fool if you didn't use it wisely, you know what I mean? Like I said, I've never... I've never... I've always appreciated what I've had and what I've got and I've never stung anything or anybody who's tried to help me. And, and again, if they prefer to give me a budget to run it, if, if they... Obviously, I've said the term, but you know they want you. It's not not a big demanding kind of. You know, we you must be on the podium. But it, it was mentioned, which is like not been mentioned before. But obviously, it's a substantial budget compared to they'd already bought the car. Me, remember? And and I just feel if I just get to the end, you know, as reliable as I can, I do feel I can do that. So I'd be a fool to just be like bullish and just trash your box for what reason, innit? I'm doing all right. I think. I mean, if I was miles off the pace, it might be different. But you know, I ain't doing so bad, like. Any other questions? I've just thought of a tale if anybody wants to hear. I just, we were talking to lads a little earlier there and uh, I, I'd done my first race. I've never done a race in my life and I had a bit of a bucket list and I thought, I want to do a race. I got invited because a couple of years ago when it was a production mini, we won our class in a BMW Mini Cooper. So we was asked by, I've uh, been buying mini parts of, of Mintech in Berry and they run like this, this, this race car. So... Uh, I had asked before about having a go and never got around to it and he just said listen do you want to have a go he said put some put some rubber on it and put some fuel in it and you can like use it and we'll look after you and I thought oh, that's a cheap day you know about tyres I thought oh, that, that, that'll be great that like so uh, anyway I goes down there and I went on the Friday we, 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 had a, we had a track day on the Friday I think it was 12 seconds off the pace when I went out you know for the lads who were you know regular like front runners by the end of the day, I got to about four seconds off the pace, but they keep going on about this this race. And is there any races amongst us like? Because it's totally different to. Oh. And is there any races in? Like, I tell you what. Funny buggers. <laughs> no, well, I never appreciated it. Or a, a racing driver kind of like it does, but freaking hell, when you're on your own, and I'll tell you this in a minute. When you're on your own doing all this racing line crap, you know they're all telling me about. So like, I'm trying to learn all this on this Friday, and then I'm qualifying on like the Saturday. And then, and I qualified, and I was 2.3 seconds off the pace of the, like, so I know where I am, they tell you 2.3 seconds off, and you're going through, pit, you know, through paddock to you, and I've got a smile from here to here, and I'm buzzing. If you've done a rally or a rally cross, whatever, you a couple of seconds off the pace, you'd be made up, I, I, I was anyway, I was absolutely made up. And then they, when you get to the thing, they give you the sheet with all the list on where you are. And guess where I were? Right. At 2.3 seconds. Last. I was last. <laughs> and I thought, flipping heck. I've got, there was 10 of them, 10 of them on like point of a second. It was unbelievable. I was on row 34. And I just, you know, <laughs> I went, because my eyes are not so good neither. Like I said, a good job these yards are like 30 yards. You know, these, the 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 I'm telling you, I actually did. I actually went down I, I, to Paddock Max. I said, listen, do us a favour. I said, I need to go and look at his. I need to know where row 34 is. So he let me go down and walk down to find, because I thought, I bet I can't see traffic lights. You know, it was that far back. And I was, and I, I was, I don't care, I, was there. I had to undo my belts so I could get up enough so I could, you could see traffic lights. Anyway, so we know we're on row 34 and, I, and I'm gutted and I'm devastated, aren't I? So then I got to watch the first race. So obviously I hadn't seen any race neither. And for two days I've been laying in this racing line, so you go out here and you come across and you cut to all this corner. And then I watched the first race, and they're like six abreast into the first corner. I said, well, you've like, you know, turned around to the team and said, well, you've been, yeah, but this is a race. I said, well, I can do that. You know, I can do that, but like mixed in traffic like. So anyway, I finished 12th in this race. And first couple of laps were brilliant because it was just like, you went into the first corner, there's like loads of activity and for doing all this, you know, and I'm thinking, yeah, no, because you're going to have to get out of the road eventually. I think I'll, all I'm going to do is finish him off. It can't be that bad. So 
So you get through them two lines, they go either way, and then so for two laps it's dead exciting because there's things going on, and then after that it's just a procession. And I learned that it, like it, it's not for me that racing. You know what I mean? It's uh, <laughs> if you're going down the Manx lanes, in it, it, it's exciting. But just going round and round and round on that when all other cars have gone, you know, you're not tussling with anybody. It worked for me that like. And then regarding the the tyres, I get up and I says, uh, and I, this is a one-off day for me, don't forget, and I'm paying for this bit myself. So this is a one-off day, so I goes and orders some tyres, and he says, right, mate, he says, you, you're allowed six of each. I said, ah, oh, I just want four. He said, what if it rains? I said, well, I'm used to driving in rain with slicks on, like, can I? So he says, no, I'll be all right. He says, no, 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 he says, you have to have wets if it rains. I said, well, I said, I told him, I said, give me a credit card, well, I'll pay for four now, but, you know, I'll come back for it if I need any more. So I gets me four tires, and then he gives me a bill for like, I think it was six something or quid or something. I said, I wanted like four, you know, because I think there's a, because he told me it's a control tire. Well, I'm used to control tires at 56 pound a piece, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> so then he says, no, no, it's that, that's, that's what it is, like, plus the VAT. I think you're freaking out. So then I goes, he says, right, puts, and I've got two tins of jerry in my back, like, put some fuel in. And like, I said, right, I'll go and get some fuel, it's back at the van. Oh, no, no, it's control fuel. Now, I've used Anglo-American fuels a few times, like, for, for my own cars. And I went up and I said, uh, can I have one of them tins of fuel? He says, you'll, you'll need two. He says, no, no, no. I said, well, I want one, I'm only here for a day. He says, no, you'll need two. I said, I'll tell you what, let me pay for one now, you know, like you do. <laughs> <laughs> like three pound or a litre, you know, it was like, I think it was like 100, 180 quid or something, I think, I can't remember what it was, so I thought, he's turning out a day day out of this like, isn't it, you know what I mean? <laughs> anyway, then when it ended up that we raced, we qualified, and I said, right, what are we doing now? He said, oh, and we raced at five to seven at night, five to seven to quarter past, then they keep us in park for a minute till quarter two, and I thought, you know, we used to be in the pub then, haven't we? Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> so anyway, so that, I can say it's not for me. Like, so I have asked if I can do Alton Park, actually. There's a mini day, I think it's July or August. And I have asked him if it's That's not... Like a, in August. Is that what it is? So I've asked if it's not hired out, can I drive it again then? Not that I want to do a race, but them six tyres, well, four tyres that I bought, you can't even sell it because they're barcoded to you. So I just want to pay the entry fee and use up the fuel that I've got in my van <laughs> and never tell you. <laughs> because I can't sell them to anybody. So that's so I have asked him so awfully. And I have asked him, he said, well, such a what is after it, such a what is after it. I said, well, just let me know. So anyway, well, if I do another race, I'll let you know. Uh, middle, of, middle of August, there's a, a mini festival and then there's the Gold Cup at end of August. Well, I know, there's, I know there's a mini challenge day anyway, don't you know, and I have asked him, but only so I can use the rubber up, because <laughs> the rubber is rock hard. You know, like, I've seen it all racing before when they, like, they set off and they're all doing this, aren't they? But I never realised, I knew they were warming tyres up, but freaking hell, they're like bricks, <laughs> these tyres. He says to me, he says, you really have to really throw it in? I really throw it, I nearly put it off. You know what I mean? Like, I nearly put it in, in wall. You know, you're all, the, the, the shite. But anyway, like I said, you live and learn, and then one lap in, they're like brand new, it's unbelievable. But obviously they're there to do 20 laps, aren't they, where them things are man. If I run it, if I run it, let's say, a cut, and I've got it wrong because it's a bit too hot, the curling, you know what I mean? Yeah, we got off like that, yeah, so. <laughs> Serious. Mm. Well, it's 11 o'clock now, we could go on from. Yeah, well, thank you very much, folks, could. I've enjoyed it, yeah. I didn't, I've never done this before, and I was, I didn't know I would do, but... I don't know. How did I do? Yeah. 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 Anyway, thanks very much, mate. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, uh, that was great to see. He, he has been good enough to bring a few, uh, a few bits of goodies. If you want to grab a bag of peace, there's a Lucas Oil key lanyard in there, mm. key ring products, <laughs> leaflet, obviously. And what I have done for the club is I brought some goodies there on the table, which you can do with them however you want, whether they're you end up prizes or raffle for or whatever, but you know what I mean. If well, I thought just use them, sure and about, and when you like them, buy some more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And if you need any oil, yeah. Lucas. Yeah. yeah, Lucas. Oh yeah, thanks very much for it. Yeah. I've enjoyed it. Yeah. Thank you very much.